So there's this lake in the middle of my city, Bangalore, which is considered to be an urban jungle. It's 48 acres of glorious land with plants and birds and lots of water and all forms of life. And every time I look at the lake, I feel really wonderful because I played a part in making it what it is. My name is Priya and this is the story of how we saved the lake. Five years ago, Kaikondali Lake was more like a marshy, weed-infested cesspool. So I thought I'll take a closer look at this lake that was right near my house. And so I started walking towards the back just to see what it was. And something extraordinarily magical happened. I was walking down here and you won't believe it. Like this far in front of me, I could not see anything not some, you know, God's shining light or anything, but there were dragonflies everywhere, these orange and black dragonflies, so thick that I couldn't see beyond my eye, beyond that far, and they were everywhere in this grove. This was this magical, mesmerizing moment in the middle of a city to have these dragonflies and this just like this wonderful connection that I had, just one moment, and then I said, I have to, have to do something for this lake. I didn't exactly know how to go about doing it, but I'm a documentary filmmaker, so we wing it all the time. We, you know, this is what I do for a living, you know, take up subjects that I know nothing about and in six months make a film that millions of people will watch. So I knew that there was something I could do and it always depends on getting a good team of people together to help augment what you don't know. The projections for the next 10 years are that we will be completely out of water if we don't do anything to these water bodies. So we are sitting on a water time bomb. We're sitting on large E. coli concentrations because there's a lot of sewage that's probably going to contaminate because of further development. If the right things are not done now, we're going to be in a big mess in the coming decade. I'm Ramesh and I'm the strategist. To. I met Priya because there was someone who called me and said, I know you're doing some stuff with the lake and here's this lady who's jumping all over the place and said, I want the lake to happen. And uh, she thinks it's just going to happen, boom. No, no, so there will be resistance. There will be resistance inside the assembly. Then we met up and then said, if, if you could put, in, put together a multidisciplinary team of ecologists and engineers and you know, willing people, I think any public interest project like this is possible. He was very well connected and he knew lots of the local people. So this is part of a larger system. There are many lakes upstream of this where water flows in. Harini actually happened to be a junior of mine in college and she's a world-renowned ecologist. So I just barged into her house and said, look, come on, I think this is where you've got to get involved. Here, come on, do this. I'm Harini, I'm an ecologist. When we first saw this lake, we were thinking of a unique place because there was a community together that understood the importance of this lake for recreation and for groundwater, but also for the traditional uses of the village community, which we felt should be conserved as far as possible, as well as for ecology. I am Lakshmi Shanteli. Lakshmi knows the ins and outs of what's happening here much more than I do. And all the field work that had to be done on the whole series of lakes was done by him because he knew, he knew the roads, he knew the villagers, he knew the people, he knew everybody, which was very important to, for us to actually plan. In the past three decades, the population has tripled from 3 million to 
the present population of 9 million. Because of this rapid urbanization, there's a lot of strain on all the open lands like parks, open spaces, and even the lakes. Some of these lakes have been converted into uh, housing complex, bus terminals, stadiums. After a few weeks of us talking, we realized that the government had come up with a list of lakes to be rejuvenated. So we were like, we have to approach the government. Yeah, once you come into that entrance, you have to go towards the right. So when you think about wanting to do something, which is in the realm of the government, right? You think of, you know, getting the people together, writing a letter, going to the press. But there's a more direct approach. Just go and approach your officials. See, these are the ones that accompany me everywhere because I can't leave them at home. And so I have to bring them to all the government offices when I have to pester the officials. And it actually helps because I have two kids running around and, you know, and then they, I'm like, I have to take my kids home. I have to feed them. Can you please do this fast? So it helps. Lakes in Bangalore are managed by a variety of different government departments. So there's the BBMP who actually manages our particular Kaikondrali Lake. But in order to remove encroachments around the lake, you have to go to the Revenue Department. There's a Bangalore Sewerage Department. There's a Pollution Control Board. There are, I mean, a whole host of other departments. And we would go from department to department asking them for something, and they would keep telling us, this is not our jurisdiction, go to the next department. But Priya is extremely persistent. She will go after every single official who's important and involved in this, and basically annoy them to the point of finally they give in to her. Hello. I think we were very lucky because we had one officer, Mr. Satish, who's the chief engineer of the Lakes Division in the BBMP, and he turned out to be someone who was open to engaging with citizens, and that just made for a great partnership. So the good news was they had a plan to rejuvenate this lake, but the bad news was it was not the kind of plan that we had in mind. Hello, Ramesh. Ah, they've seen the plans. The government approach was a pure engineering approach. Mm -hmm. Just excavate all the soil, fill in the water and be done with it. They had gazebos, they had boating and boating jetties and areas for electric lights, an ornamental garden. But what we really wanted was a lot of place for water. So now our project went into another phase. It was like operation come up with a better plan and come up with it fast. Nobody else is in the shallows. The cut it out, this is the end of the whole lake. People... I'm Subramania, I'm a bird lover. When the city authorities decided to develop the lakes, the whole idea was to increase the water holding capacity of the lake. In the process, they designed the lake in such a way that the lake became a sub bowl kind of a design. We wanted the lake bed to slope gently from the foreshore towards the main bund, where the deepest zone is, the natural structure that the lake had before, so that the deepest water zone still is very close to the main bund, where the uh, area can be used by uh, birds like ducks. And as you move away from the main bund, you have different kinds of birds like uh, egrets, herons, moorhens using the lake. OK, so this is all important for birds. Birds. Uh, the bird, you can use birds as an indicator. And now for a boating jetty. And the island shouldn't be connected to the lake, right? We don't want that. No, no, there, there should not be a land bridge uh, connecting the main land here. In our villagers, regularly, cattle wash, uh, grass cut, and grass cut. We have to do this. 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 We to we went back to the BBMP office and said, let's gently suggest to them what we don't want and what we want, and let's see how it plays out. Plus for birds, it becomes an issue because yeah. we want a place for nesting which is undisturbed. What your idea is nice. We'll increase the water area. We'll take this pathway to the edge. 
And the boating also. We'll remove the boating. You, we wanted yeah. the boating. It was great because we told him, you know, no boating jetty, we don't want this ornamental garden, we want this. We were pretty, you know, quite a few changes. And he said, yeah, that sounds reasonable, this sounds... And there were a couple of things he said no to, but then, you know, there were many things he said fine. Okay, okay. Now our priority is first fix the boundaries, fence it, then the next thing is we want to prevent the sewage coming in, into the lake itself. So we'll be constructing a separate line, a diversion line. But where does it go then? If you divert it, it goes to the next lake? Naturally, it will go to the next lake. But still, you know, there is a government plan, maybe in another three, four years. They want, want to make zero sewage system in all the open drains. It was a new approach for us when Kaikonanali residents, local residents came and with a good uh, proposal for implementing this uh, lake because they were the end users. We need to preserve and protect all these lakes for the future generation. I don't want the future generation to go 100 kilometers out of Bangalore to see a lake. We decided then maybe we should take it just one step further and then get an architect into the picture so that we can give them, you know, plans and the schematics and everything. Sure, you know, you know how to get there, right? And then we spent the next five months looking for an architect who would do it for free. And then we found our perfect scapegoat. Namaskar. Namaskar. This is Vasu, by the way. He's the guy who said he would do everything pro bono. Look at him. Did I have a choice? <laughs> Hi, I'm Vasu and I'm an architect. I think the refreshing thing about this is you have the community actually participating, taking the lead, uh, outlining the requirements and giving a brief to the architect. And I think it would mean that the lake would be that much more contextual and that much more well used. Vasu also actually did all the computation of the costs and everything and gave it to the government which otherwise would have taken months for the government to do, and they just had to sign off and execute. Bill of materials, the estimate. We actually did good for construction drawings for the contractors. We did literally everything that was required, short of actually going and digging there. So. <laughs> I thought our job was done, and in my naivete, I thought I'd sit back and wait for the beautiful lake to be delivered. If only it were that easy. The government completely agreed with us. But at the same time, what if the contractor suddenly decides to do something that was not part of paper and the government missed it? So that's where we came in and said, oh, yep, we're here. We're going to live with this for the rest of our lives. Let's be the overseers. We started taking shifts, you know, everybody was taking their turns to come in and watch. The contractor also felt like we were part of the solution, so often he would call us and tell us he was having a problem. Uh, good morning. If he couldn't reach the officials, we'd reach the officials for him. So it worked out really well. And then we had to be constantly vigilant because there were other things that could undo everything that we had worked hard to do. Landlords who own patches of land on the opposite side of the road, they wanted to push this fence to somewhere where we are standing because they said, in the eventuality of the road getting widened, uh, we would lose our land, which is on the other side of the road. And there was fighting and there was threats to kill. Uh, the goons were all on the other side of the road and uh, shouting and hooting at us and threatening the government officials. And uh, finally, the government sent in paramilitary forces and we uh, successfully started the work midnight and finished it in the morning so that people wouldn't see that the fence was done and everyone woke up to a completed fence in the morning. After rejuvenation of the lake, we were waiting for the monsoons. And one thing that we had really argued with the BBMP about was the need to extend the area of the lake within water. And they kept telling us that you're not going to have enough water coming back into the lake because this area is so urban now, it's not going to give you enough of a catchment to actually fill this lake. So we went completely on a gut feeling and faith, as well as talking to the locals here. But then the first month of rain passed, and then the second month of the rain passed, and we were in the third month of the monsoon, 
and we didn't have water in the lake and we started getting really worried about this because if we didn't have a drop of water in this expensive restoration of this very large lake what did this mean for us and one day purely by chance priya and i and ramesh were out for a walk with the, in the lake with priya's kids and my daughter and water started gushing in what was the best moment of this project water coming in yes i'd say that for all of us after, after months, months of waiting biting, water coming in we picked up our like kids, kids and we brought them here yep. it's coming from an upstream, upstream lake. lake so so ours had been dredged and all the water had been and you know we were waiting for the water 3 4 months then when that upstream lake overflew it just gushed, gushed in. in september right uh, september. september 7th if i'm not mistaken you remember the, the date, date. <laughs> yep it's no easy task for four or five people to keep an eye on the lake It's an urban common so it's dynamic. But quietly, miraculously, something lovely was happening. This lake was becoming this place for animals and birds. And it also became this meeting point for lots of people who wanted to do something larger than themselves but didn't know where to begin. My name is David Lewis. I volunteer to take care of the lake. He's fixing everything at the lake. In my old days, I wanted a small piece of land, grow some trees and plants and flowers, and have some fun. God has given me this 48 acres to take care as my own. So, I feel very happy. Hi, David. How are you? How are you? I was always curious about this small patch of green that was about a few uh, hundred meters from the road. So one day I just walked by and said, "Let me have a look at this." You have to be in Bangalore to understand why it's special. There are hardly any lakes worth going to. You can smell a lake in Bangalore faster than you can see it. So I said, "I would love to be part of this because if I'm getting this, I should do something in return." ನಮ್ಮ ನಮ್ಮ ಹೋಟ್ಲು ಬಂದ್ಬಿಟ್ಟು ಹನ್ನೊಂದು ಗಂಟೆ ರಾತ್ರಿ ತನಕ ನಮ್ಮ ಹೋಟೆಲಿ ಓಪನ್ ಆಗಿರುತ್ತೆ ಡೈಲಿ ಒಂದ್ ರೌಂಡ್ ಕೆರೆಗೆ ನಾನು ಹೋಗ್ತೀನಿ ಬಟ್ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಏನ್ ನಡೀತಾ ಇದೆ ಏನಂತ ನೋಡ್ತೀನಿ ಅಥವಾ ಯಾವ್ದಾದ್ರು ಅನೈತಿಕ ಚಟುವಟಿಕೆಗಳು ನಡೀತಾವ ಅಥವಾ ಏನಾದ್ರು ನೋಡ್ತೀವಿ ಅನ್ನೋದು ಅದನ್ನ ನೋಡ್ಕೊಂಡ್ಬಂದು ನಾನು ಜಸ್ಟ್ ವಾಚ್ ಮಾಡ್ತಾ ಇರ್ತೀನಿ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಜೆರಿ ಹೀಸ್ ಅಪಿಟಾಲಜಿಸ್ಟ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಹೀಸ್ ಲಿವ್ ಹಿಯರ್ ಆಲ್ ಇಸ್ ಲೈಫ್ ಐ ಶು ಸೈಕಲ್ ಪಾಸ್ ದಿಸ್ ಲೇಕ್ ಎವ್ರಿ ಡೇ ಟು ಸ್ಕೂಲ್ I used to fish, I used to look for snakes, or just hang out here quite a lot. This is an olive keelback water snake. They've got plenty of nesting space as well, so they're, they're incredibly... Well, they're actually quite beautiful. I think one of the things that the lake's been able to achieve is there's different kinds of places for everything. In a grove like this that gets inundated during the monsoons, there's tree frogs that will live up in the trees. Toads will, will live in leaf litter like this, and then when the rains come, uh spawn in the water checkered keelback water snakes in the water cobras uh, and russell's vipers out here so there's there's enough diversity to support a very healthy and and diverse ecosystem I want to show you something so I talk to you about the breach Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, that's here. See this? That's the one that I was talking about. So what you need to do is get those guys to quickly fix it up. Otherwise, it's going to become big. This lake, I realized after working on it that it was part of a chain of lakes. So unless we all, all the lakes above, upstream and downstream, think as one, there's no point just looking after this one lake because something that happens up there could destroy this lake. Yeah. and something that we do wrong could destroy a lake down so the ecosystem has to be extended to the whole lake chain 
So after having worked for many years and the lake is now starting to look and feel like a nice ecosystem, we had asked the government to rejuvenate this whole chain. And they started what is called dewatering of the upstream lakes, but those lakes are extremely polluted with sewage. So all of that just started flowing into Kaikon Rally. We just couldn't stop it because there was monsoon, the volume of water was lots, laced with sewage, fish were dying, turtles. It was one of the saddest moments for me in this whole process. And we're still dealing with it. We're still dealing with it. Rain in Laguna. There are a lot of developers who would give anything to get this place. Prime land right in the middle of a teeming, developing IT corridor of Bangalore. So this is fighting a battle. You have construction there, like you can see at the background. And you have a large construction there. And you have another big construction happening at the back. And then you'll soon have constructions happening here in the corner. To build these concrete structures, you need labor. And the easy way to accommodate labor is to build shanties till your construction is over for a period of a year or so. The biggest consequence of this is that all the sewage and all the water that they use they just let it go straight into the lake. Well, when this building was just about starting and they were digging for foundation, they had about 400 laborers in tin sheds right on the edge of this fence. And normally, they will have common toilets. And then they'll suck the thing out and they'll go and dispose it. But here, there was an easy access to a lake. Why do all that? So they just built a little channel so it would come into the lake. And so we had raw sewage from 400 laborers coming into the lake. And so we tried everything, we called the officials, and they all did their job, you know, which was by the book, give them the notice, you have to give three notices, and then you have to wait, and so it was two months, and this was going on. And after a point, we just lost our patience, and we're like, you know, the officials are doing their job, these people continue to flout it, and we see that this lake that we care about is getting inundated with sewage. So I said, fine, you know what? I'm gonna be this pit bull that I'm reputed to be, and I got the number for the guy whose job it is, is to enforce the uh, notice. And I said to him, you know, you know, can you do this? And he said, yeah, I'm trying, I'm trying. We'll, we'll take care of it. We have lots of other things to do. So I published this number in an email to many, many people, you know, people who care about the lake. And everybody started calling the guy. Uh, and I told them, call him. Every moment you get today, just call the guy. So I think he got so many calls that by the evening, he called me and he said, Madam, I will take care of it, madam. And then in 24 hours, all the laborers were shifted out and there was no more sewage. So you have to do these kind of like crazy things to get the job done. My name is Meera and I'm an editor at a news magazine. So when I came across this story and I said, well, we should share these stories online. And, uh, and that's what we did. We started documenting many of the stuff uh, that was happening here, the changes they're trying to make, the challenges they were facing. And slowly these stories started to influence more and more people. And uh, now, if you look at it, there are probably around a dozen lakes in the city which are you know, in various stages of rejuvenation or having been completed. I realized that there was another lake that was being developed you know, where Kaikon was Priya was already involved and there was Ramesh involved and I meet Ramesh and he's this super energetic guy and he's like, what didn't you do this and why don't you do that? And he's, he was really motivating. So the fact that these guys were ahead in the game from us helped us to be able to learn and... So basically we were the scapegoats. We did everything and we did it wrong and everybody else said, ah, they did it wrong, let's not do it that way. I've realized in this whole exercise that if people like me don't get into the mainstream political system and work with the system rather than sit out and criticize and crib and do nothing about it, we're not going to get change. So that's where I'm headed. <laughs> The beauty of the Kaikondali Lake story for me 
is that a bunch of ordinary people, quite clueless to begin with, can start this major journey, which is difficult and challenging to restore this lake, can learn a lot in the process, can have something successful to show that we can be proud of, and can now have something to teach other people who want to start this journey. And I think it just shows you the power of belief in possibility and the power of collective action. I have a real sense of satisfaction for at least seeing that beautiful lake with a lot of birds, trees, and people enjoying the environment. Lots of things around us are a mess. So if you let it overwhelm us, then we'll just be paralyzed. If you see something around you that you want to change, just go for it, you know? It might be a hard journey, but you won't know unless you just go for it. <laughs>